You're listening to the Empowering Process Podcast with your host, Gail Kraft. Listen as she holds frank discussions around how your purpose, being present, and trusting your power impacts your life. Whether you're an entrepreneur, leader, or developing your vision, you'll find wisdom and insights you can utilize right now. Welcome your host, Gail Kraft. Hey, everybody, Gail Craft here from the Empowering Process podcast. And with me today, I have this amazing woman. Her name is Dawn Large. Let me tell you a little bit about Dawn. She is an actionability coach, a writer. She's the author of Soul Vitamins, Nourish and Align Your Inner You. And as a coach, she works with motivated creatives, clients, who want to step up to a new level of influence. She helps her clients quiet their self-doubt and strengthen their self-efficacy. From business leaders to purpose-driven individuals, Dawn's approach to coaching allows her clients to step up into a new level of influence to achieve their dreams. Dawn, we're gonna talk about taking action on your breakthrough ideas today. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Gail, and um, thank you for this honor and privilege to have a conversation together on your podcast. Uh, it's it's just so much fun, so much fun. So I know Don from um, a mastermind group that we're both involved in, and we talk about some of the stuff some of the time. So one of the things that you said when we just kind of connected, Don, was like, well, what do you mean by breakthrough idea, right? And that's that's one of those... <laughs> words or phrases that get thrown around a lot, right? Things like, like yeah. lately yeah. We, we hear um, uh, about that the imposter syndrome, right? It, it's yeah. yet another phrase that everyone is throwing around and, and we all attach different meaning, right? So we're yes. going to talk about breakthrough ideas from a bunch of different perspectives because it means so many different things, right? It does. It really does. Uh, it could be a breakthrough idea from um, an internal breakthrough idea um, that, you know, you're experiencing. Um, and, you know, when I first saw the word, because actually this is the first time I'd seen the word and I was like, Gail, what do you mean by this? She goes, well, that's the fun, Dawn. <laughs> Let's explore it. So, um, you know, I like the even when you think about the word break, something breaks. And sometimes we go, Oh, my goodness, that has broken. But often, when something gets broken, it allows for something new, something stronger, a different way of doing something to come out of that. Um, so those are I something off the top of my head, um, no. with regard to breakthrough ideas. So for, for me, the word breakthrough has um, multiple levels, right? Yeah. Um, I also come from a background of motivational speakers. Um, I mm -hmm. am a motivational speaker. I've worked with motivational speakers. And when you go to one of their events, they're looking for you to have a breakthrough. What yeah. that means in that environment is literally something is holding you back and you break through that wall into a new understanding of who you are and what your potential and possibilities are, right? And so yeah. the breakthrough yeah. is like shattering glass and you come through the other end. For me, it was shattering yeah. a brick wall, not glass, but in any case, it's coming yeah. through the other side. So when you use that imagery and you talk about a breakthrough idea, right? It is that small something that one step further that takes your dreams, your desires, your wants to a whole new level. I mean, that's where the creativity is. Creativity is not this big, amazing um, bomb that happens. It's little tiny steps that are made. And yeah. then one day, all those little pieces fit together and it looks like a breakthrough. Yeah. But oh, yeah. <laughs> right, right. But it's not a breakthrough, guys. It didn't, bam, just happen. The pieces click together at that moment. But it's yeah. all of the little steps, right? So, oh, yeah. Yes. So when I, I think and of, I, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm, when you're, you're talking like that, you know, you know, my, 
one of my pa- my passion is this topic of self efficacy, and uh, you know, for me, that's my breakthrough idea. Um, and you know, the interesting thing is, I got exposed to it a very long time ago. Um, when I was in my first career, I was worked in the area of exercise physiology and worked specifically in the area of physiologically testing athletes and um, and people who were wanting to, you know, compete in a marathon or do something like that. And part of this was recertification. So every year we had to recertify and we had to keep ourselves, you know, current and up to date. And I was sitting in a lab listening, kind of half listening because this was a recertification. And the person was talking about, you know, self um, esteem. And I'm going, yeah, tech, I got, I got self esteem. Yeah, I understand, you know, I'm, I'm worthy, etc. Uh, self confidence. And I went, yeah, I, yeah, self confidence, you know, kind of self esteem, self confidence. And then she went self efficacy. And I went, what's that? I've never heard of that term. And so I kind of looked at my notes, I listened to what was being said, and um, I was kind of going, okay, I I really had to think, because it, it was kind of worded in a different way. And the more I looked at it, it was kind of like, uh, I don't really like this. <laughs> I, because, and let's get real, the reason was, I realized I did not have a strong self-efficacy. So I I did what a lot of people do. I forgot about it. <laughs> if it's I hard, just, you usually do. <laughs> don't we love it? Okay. So fast forward. Okay. A number of years later. Okay. This was about five years ago, four years ago later um, now. I was having coffee with a woman and she was asking me to speak to her uh, group. And this was a group of women who want to invest in real estate. And they've never done it before. And so, you know, I said, well, what is their biggest challenge? And, you know, she paused and she says, well, they don't believe they can. They don't believe that they could walk into a manager's office in a bank and get a loan or a mortgage or a line of credit. Uh, They don't believe that they could figure out what the right real estate for them would be to purchase. They don't believe they can. And as I rode my bike home from that meeting, that phrase, they don't believe they can, kept going through my mind. And believe it or not, Up from the recesses of my mind came that word from so many years ago of self-efficacy. That's that's where the word taking action, the phrase taking action, many, like you did earlier, you know, people have the breakthrough ideas. You had an aha moment when you first heard that word, but you didn't act on it. Yes. Right? (laughs) Yeah, I didn't. I shoved it away because it made me uncomfortable. It was like, it was kind of a, like, oh, I'm not quite good enough. Or, you know, those all those different thoughts that fly through our mind when we're pushed in an area that um, we're not strong in. So, so you had this presentation. So, so I'll, I'll divert a little bit and then come back. Much of my training, mm-hmm. I have had the opportunity to create courses in, in order to solidify my training. Right. Right. right? So um, if you take a training with me, it is usually something that I have personally gone through. Yeah. Right. And then I am creating my own flavor of training because I've processed and internalized and changed it. And now this is me retraining. Yeah. by sharing it with you. So now you get a chance to take a look at this word again, right? I do. Right, I do. years later. And I did. 
right? So tell, tell us about when you took action. How did you take action? Oh, it's such a good question. So I, um, I was early on in my coaching career, earlier on, and I realized when I heard this word, I realized there were a lot of things that I hadn't done in my life because I didn't um, believe I could. And um, that, you know, I'd, I'd gone through a hard time and that, that was, you know, I had to grieve, I had to let go of that. But I thought, wow, I have, at various times in my life, struggled with self efficacy, and therefore, I haven't done some of the things that I really wanted to do, because I didn't believe that I could actually have the capability to achieve that outcome. Just gave you the definition of self efficacy there. Right. right. <laughs> and, 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 so, uh, yet, yeah, so there was me with these thoughts. And yet I'm looking at friends, cohorts, people I know, who'd gone on to uh, achieve amazing things. And I'm asking myself the question, how the heck did they do that? And I don't. What, how are they? Um, yeah, how did they have a strong self-efficacy? And I don't. And that thought there started me on what I call my self-efficacy project, <laughs> which was, <laughs> let's create a project here, um, was how do these individuals strengthen their self-efficacy? Because see, I knew as I, you know, delved into it, as I thought about it, this was a very important topic that possibly if you're in the field of medicine or in the field of education, you're aware of, but not in the field of entrepreneurs and business and corporate and, you know, um, going after those dreams you have. And, um, and I knew that self-efficacy totally affects the goals we're going to choose, what we go after, how we think, how we feel. And so, you know, take two people with self-efficacy um, and one has high self-efficacy, the other person has low self-efficacy. The person with high self-efficacy, they go, I think I can. Yes, I can. You know, kind of like the little engine that went up the mountain. Um, the other person is, oh, I can't do that. And, well, and a lot of times, Don, um, you know, the, the taking action piece, um, when I work, work with clients who have the self-esteem issue, which we all do, I don't care who you yeah. are, I, I yeah. still struggle with it, everybody does, so, yeah. you know, yeah. don't give me the bullshit you don't, just saying, um, but we talk about knowing where your goal is, but taking I don't want to say focus off the, the goal because we do have to keep our eye on the goal, but really look at what can I do this minute, this moment right now that ties into that right now. Yeah. What's the one little teeny weeny thing I can do. And if that's yeah. all I can do, it's still one teeny weeny thing towards where I want to go. And, and so then you have success. And then tomorrow, what's today's one teeny weeny thing I can do? And so every day, just one thing, not pushing yourself too far, but one thing that you wouldn't normally do that you can do today that is tied into that goal. And you have another day of success. Yeah. And then another day of success. Success breeds success. And you yeah. can look at yourself in the mirror and say, in five days, I've done five things. Holy crap, I did that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. you start to see evidence that contradicts the evidence that you've been focusing on of your inability. Yes. Right? Right? Yeah. And, that, and that's the process. 
of taking oh, action. Oh, it is, it is very much the process because of the, um, the 30 people I interviewed, 30 plus, <laughs> and uh, the answers from the surveys that I got back on this topic, um, action was mentioned two times more than anything else. And, um, you know, and so self-efficacy is really interesting because it's a belief. So I have a belief that I have the capability. I've inserted the word actionability um, to achieve a specific outcome whether that be your goal, your dream, whatever that is, you're writing a book, you know, you're starting a yoga class, it can be whatever it is. So I um, thought, okay, here's a belief. Here is executing action. Here's an outcome. But if my belief is low, how the heck do I change it? So that I can achieve my outcome. And I realized, okay, that to me is, you know, what I call in the zone of actionability. Well, in so that middle part. At, in action. So we are um, emotional beings. And yes. that means energy in motion. Yes. And the key is to get that energy moving. It's interesting because I had this conversation today with another person that I, I do some work with. And I was telling him my trip to San Diego, I got to see, you know, the clients that I used to have there came out of the woodwork. Gail's back. I want to have a session before you leave. And um, I was met with one, one gentleman in particular. Now he is in the dancing world. He is a performer. Um, he is an instructor. And he and I worked on many things when I was there. And one of them was the physical piece. I had him connect with the personal trainer. And even though he's a dancer, right? Working out yeah. is a di yeah. different kind of energy. And so when we got together, you know, we caught up on a few things first. And he said, you know, Gail, I realized that if I don't work out in the morning, I lose my energy by the end of the day. If I work out in the morning, because he, you know, he's teaching classes at night. So he may be up at eight, nine o'clock in the morning. He's not going to bed, to, well, going home until nine, 10 o'clock at night, right? He needs to be up yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, for his students, plus the yeah. private lessons <laughs> in between. It's exhausting. Um, he says, I, I have no problem if I work out. If I don't work out, I really pay the price. Right. And so yeah. energy is not necessarily taking action on that one. If you can't take action today, one little step, take some kind of action. Yes. Right. Yeah. Some kind of walk, go up and down the stairs a dozen times. Yeah. Right. Move your body. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It, it, it has an amazing ripple of fact, you know, into um, our, our mind when we're physically in action, into our emotions, into, uh, you know, and in our body. It's like you move one thing here and there's this ripple effect into all the other areas. Oh, which, because we're an you know, integrated being. We are very integrated and which is one of the reasons, you know, kind of as I wrestled with my book coming back to soul vitamins is okay vitamins for the soul and as I you know was thinking about it and out of my interviews the, about self-efficacy you you know switch a mindset and it has an effect in your ability to do something physical um you know it, it or you know all the other you know you you switch um you know, your mindset, and it affects your feelings and your attitude. Uh, you know, like, we're very dynamic. And absolutely. And that 
you know, ability to make some type of change is so powerful. And that, that again, you know, you brought it up inherently, not even um, necessarily having taken the time to think, okay, how can I strengthen my self-efficacy? And one of the biggest ones is to take small steps. And you've already emphasized, it's not just a small step, it's a micro step. Because it's, it's basically the step that is so small that you'll actually do it. Thank you. Thank you. So, and, and what's interesting is this has been how I've been successful in business. This is how I've been successful in anything that I've done my entire life. And I, I don't know if you, well, I'm going to remind you guys, there was a song <laughs> from, from the 40s. I don't remember what movie it was, right? But the little ant that moved the rubber tree plant. He had high oh, hopes, I love it. right? And I used to say, we're just moving the rubber tree plant. Just push it and just push it and just push it. Eventually we'll get that, that plant off the table, yeah. right? Yeah. And that has been my approach my entire life. And it yeah. works, guys. It works in anything oh, you want it, to do. And it works. And then there's another little layer on those micro actions that came out of actually one of the Olympic athletes I interviewed. And they were talking about the the showing up every day, doing the workout consistently. (laughs) What, what, what consistent, right? And that's why we say small actions every day, because you are more likely to be consistent yeah. with number one, something that you can handle. And number two, yeah. based on the fact that you were successful yesterday, you feel good about trying it again today. Oh, yeah. Right? Yes. And, and, you know, I have to remind myself this regularly. <laughs> you know, I, I may be conversant. I have a lot of uh, knowledge. I've talked to a lot of people. Um, and you know, some days I have to remind myself it's small, consistent steps. Right. And, and what's, what I have discovered, you know, so again, I'm talking from my personal experience. Doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It's my personal experience. Um, what I have learned is that when I take these small steps towards a goal, I am not surprised anymore when that goal shifts and I go in a different direction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because, yeah. because I'm open to, and I'm not stuck on the goal. So some people, especially if you're in business, um, in corporate will say, this is, this is it. It's not movable. This is, this is the goal, right? Well, uh, we might not achieve that goal. One of my claims to success, <laughs> Right. as a project yes. manager um, uh-huh. was taking a look at, well, what do you mean success for this project? I'll give you an example. I started working for a company, very international, high level mm-hmm. company, I'm not going to use the name. Um, and I came in as the lead for, you know, a bunch of, a, a bunch of, um, a bunch of folks and, lead of some technical teams to managing the program for this big organizations. And I walk into a meeting with one of my clients and she's giving this presentation on, you know, what needs to be done. And she's using, okay, the tools and the tools of Six Sigma, I'm Six Sigma certified. And she's presenting her pretty charts and her tools. And I walk out with my boss and I said, oh, this project's going to fail. And she said, what do you mean? I said, oh, I don't care what chart she has up there. She's got the wrong people in the room. Right. So unless she's going to do the work and I don't see how she can, not going to happen. I really want to take this project over. And she she said, oh, she would love you too, Gail. Go talk to her. Right. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Please relieve me. (laughs) So, So I went over and, um, 
And when I took a look at what needed to be done, they had a hard and fast December 31st timeline. This has to be delivered and up and running by December 30th. No way that was going to happen. This was yeah. October, in, middle to the end of October when I started and the project hadn't even gone in the right direction yet. Okay. It, it wasn't going to happen. So, um, so I went to the VP, who's the owner of the project. And I said, so. I know that you have money tied to this. You get a bonus if we are successful in going live by December 31st. What specifically does going live mean to you? Right? To the terms of success. And he says, well, we need to have one live the uh, process. So I'm not going to tell you, I can't, you know, for confidential reasons. I'm like, Okay, so before December 31st, we were able to test live, <laughs> right? <laughs> we weren't up and running until February, but we were able to run a live test through a production environment and he got his bonus. Oh, that's so cool. Right? And you know, yes, yes. And you know, what is interesting in that, and you know, I'm going to use it as another layer, another dynamic of self-efficacy is I bet the woman that was very glad that you took over the project she had low self-efficacy about this project because see the interesting thing about self-efficacy is it's outcome specific so she didn't really believe that she could make this happen um, six weeks later by the end of December and she couldn't she was right she couldn't you could, she couldn't. And you, because, you know, you came in with high self-efficacy in your ability to see a problem, again, specific, okay, ability to um, figure out what the key issue was here. Because you had self, high self-efficacy, you could step up and say, hey, what if I took over that project? And so people who have higher self-efficacy are willing to take on challenges because they don't look at a challenge of, oh man, this is too much, this is gonna work. And all of a sudden their motivation to even make it happen falls away. And it doesn't work. I look because at challenges as fun. Oh, exactly. And that is one of the uh, characteristics of a person with higher self-efficacy. So not only that is, but that you were able to say, okay, yeah, that's not going to work. But here, this is how we can make it work so that it is successful. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I can tell you my whole key to success. I mean, I you know, situation after situation and including with my clients is coming into mind about where, uh, like, well, what does success look like? What can mm -hmm. we do? What is mm -hmm. it that we can achieve, right? It's yeah. not that we can't get this done. Um, I worked on a huge project. There were two of two project managers on that one, huge, huge project. And we were working with an outside vendor that wasn't delivering and was not mm -hmm. capable of delivering. That outside vendor right. was a mistake. Yeah. And our recommendation when we went to our leaders was we have to cut ties with them. But yeah. here's what we without them can achieve. Yeah. Right. Here's what yeah. internally we are capable of doing. Even if we cut ties with them, but we have to cut diet ties with them because they will never deliver what we're looking for. Yeah. Right. And so when you have a problem, people focus on, oh, shit, we can't get this done. No, no. you can't get this done. But what is the purpose? What is the goal? And what can you get done? Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. What What's are the, the possibilities? Right. Exactly. That was the word. You yep. know, we often look at something, oh, this can't work out. And no, uh, yeah, it may not work out given this direction, given these choices, given this resources. But if you step back and pause 
and say, but what are the possibilities? It's all of a sudden, oftentimes, I think the end product ends up being way better <laughs> than, Absolutely. The one, Absolutely. than the one that was started, you started out with. Right, right. Because because you get a chance to refocus and, and redirect. It's it's kind of like I said, the goal is not solid. You know, it's yeah. broad stroke. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so when you get yeah. back to why are we doing this? Not yeah. not the, the this and result that you want me to have. But why are we doing this? Oh, that's the problem we're trying to solve. Okay, yeah. then I can yeah. move this over a little bit to the right. And we can get there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's, so, there's often a number of different ways of achieving um, the outcome or the goal that you want. Right. And, and so so people will come. So we're both coaches. And, and I will get a client. Well, you know, I want to be a better communicator. Well, why do you think you're a bad communicator? What, what does communicating get you? what why do you think it's important and i will say 100 percent of the time at least so far on my track record it has nothing to do usually the person who comes to me and says they're a bad communicator are excellent communicators <laughs> right <laughs> they are amazing communicators right yeah. um, there's something else going on there um yeah. a, a, a self-belief right there's another yeah. struggle going on that's underlying that that they yeah. have not really taken a look at, you know, um, hundred percent well, agree with you. <laughs> of the time, right. So I will, and I'll tell my, one of my favorite clients, I mean, I have my favorites, sorry guys, I do have my favorites. Um, and he's, you know, communicating, he is, is not, he's just, I'm a terrible communicator. And quite honestly, that's his God given gift, right? That's one of the other things I will do with clients who are open to it is find out what your God given gift is. And yeah. this was his was to communicate. And, and I'm, I'm like, so, you know, we're talking about the law of polarity, right? If you're, you're not communicating at all, it's also communicating. Uh, it's the other end of the polarity. So, you know, let's talk about your ability not to communicate. And he did an exercise you and I both know very well, which is, you know, the interview. And the first yeah. question he answered he drew me in. I was in the office that he created. I was looking out the window. I was in the description was so vivid. So we get into the meeting and I'm like, what do you mean you're not a communicator? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Did you read what you sent to me? Because it was amazing. Right. And yeah. come to find out. He has a little dys dyslexia that he has to deal with. Yeah. And that is why he felt like I can't spell. I can't see a spelling error because I'm dyslexic. I see what my brain thinks is there, not what is really on the paper. It's right. a real problem. Right. But I love to write and I am a communicator. That's not my God-given gift, but it is one of the things that I can do. And so we worked on the dyslexia instead. Wow. Yeah. And he is an amazing orator. He's an amazing, uh, people who are communicators are natural leaders. He's an amazing leader. Um, he's yeah. changed his position at work into one where he can express himself more. And he's writing a book. And he's Oh my goodness. And he's journaling, right? Yeah. Right. And so here he thought originally, I can't. Right. <laughs> And then it, he, he, you know, um, went into action in a different way than what might be typical, but now he.
Thank you for listening to the Empowering Process Podcast. Be sure to visit Gail at gailcraft.com to learn more about how she serves thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and goal seekers. And remember, if you like this broadcast, be sure to share and subscribe so you don't miss an episode.